May 12th, 9.34 a.m. High Court of Crime. Accused Lobby. <clears throat> Maya looks exhausted, but I can't blame her. Nick, I was thinking about it all day yesterday. I never properly asked you to defend me, did I? It doesn't matter. I'm on this case till the bitter end. I know. That's why I wanted to officially ask you for your help. You got it, Maya. Let's do this. We gotta wrap this up and get back home so you can make your dream show come true. The Steel Samurai versus the Plumed Punisher, right? You bet. You look as if you did not sleep last night, Barkhead. It is written all over your face. How can you expect to put up a respectable defense like that? I'm all fired up and raring to go. I guess Maya's not the only one looking exhausted. Mm -hmm. Rafus doesn't seem to be in the best of spirits herself. <laughs> go ahead, feign confidence now while you are still able. For I will see to it that your last rites are read to you this day. Heh. <laughs> Guess it was just my imagination. Ready, Nick? Okay, Maya. Let's head on in. May 12th. High Court of Kurine. All rise. Now then, if everyone is ready. The defense is ready, your majesty. The prosecution is ready. Let us begin without further delay. Oh, no prayers this time, Prosecutor Sadmari. I already offered my prayers for the latest victim during my visit to the crime scene. Being that the accused has already been found guilty of the first murder, let us hasten this trial so we may put this dead lawyer walking out of his misery. I could not agree more. In yesterday's trial, the accused was already found guilty of murdering the high priest. And today she will be tried for the murder of his disciple, Pere Zilot. Now then, Prosecutor Sadmari, your opening statement, if you would. Certainly. The accused has now slain two of the most devout clergymen in Quranism. Even the lowest level of hell, the hell of tickling, would not be punishment enough. Then what terrible fate awaits her? <sighs> Bali Kipokon Hell, a realm of eternal agony. There she will suffer the endless punishment of Yagar by the Galun of Pomoten. Furthermore, <laughs> enough, enough! My blood runs cold with the mere thought that such a terrible place exists. I was going to ask for a translation, but on second thought, ignorance is bliss. Now then, please continue, minus the part about the terrible hell awaiting the accused. As you wish. The victim of this heinous crime was the high priest's disciple, Pere Zilla. He had been training under the high priest while living at the priest's home. I had met him a number of times, and he seemed like an earnest young man. How tragic that he met such a terrible end. The murder occurred at the Plaza Devotion during the purification rite. It was a bold crime carried out while the plaza was full of the fateful deep in prayer. The Warbot Daga was found impaled in the victim's upper back. The stabbing caused a spinal cord injury that killed him instantly. Ah, the Warbot Dagger, Lady Kira's weapon of choice. We have already established that the accused prince were on the weapon. Incredibly damning evidence in itself. No! I didn't do it, Jackson! Hold your tongue. Now, being that the accused Maya Fey is a serial killer, the prosecution believes that the death penalty is the only possible sentence. Would the defense care to respond? The accused is innocent. 
and nothing can convince me otherwise. After all, the crime scene was packed with worshippers. How could my client possibly have committed this murder without a single witness? <laughs> the accused's fingerprints on the murder weapon alone is enough to render a verdict. As such, I see no need to debate this any further. But! Well, once her benevolence conducts her seance, it will be clear for all to see. Your Majesty, might I have a word? Hmm? Is something the matter, Prosecutor Sadmari? It is about the divination seance. Your benevolence! Stop right there, Prosecutor Sadmari! As you wish. Forgive me for overstepping my bounds. What was that all about? Barbed head, have you made peace with your fate? For this time, the divination seance will bring you to your knees. I'm ready, and I accept your challenge. The only problem is I have no weapons at my disposal. Our only hope now is what we can glean from the Seon's vision and Rafa's insights. Very well. The divination seance, if you please, your benevolence. Yes. Let us begin. Nena! O oh, Holy Mother! We hold this divination seance in your name. Let the eyes of everyone here be clear, and our ears be unstopped. O oh, dance of devotion, guide the victim's soul to me, so that we may receive their final memories in the pool of souls. Something's wrong. I don't get it. Why wasn't there anything to see? Your benevolence. What in the world? <sighs> I was unable to evoke any sort of response. I called out the spirit's name many times, but to no avail. Just as I thought. Wait, what does he know that we don't? I had sought to confirm the contents of today's divination seance. After all, it is customary for the prosecution prosecutor to verify it beforehand. Come to think of it. I must go perform a divination seance for Parezila. It is our custom for the prosecution to review its contents before trial begins. 
and that is why I sought to stop her benevolence from performing it here. However, she insisted that it be done. She wished to try one more time here in the Hall of Justice. It would appear her benevolence is tired from her manifold duties. I am not anything of a sort! The victim's spirit will not answer my call, but I know not why! It is my sacred duty to convey the truth through the divination seance! Rafa, what are we to do without a divination seance? I suppose I shall have to deliver the last rites without them. The prosecution has already taken that into account when preparing for today. I am fully capable of proving the accused guilt, with or without a divination seance. <laughs> you never fail to impress, Prosecutor Sadma. This is bad. The divination seance was my one and only hope. Your Majesty, her benevolence says she isn't tired, so shouldn't we try to find out why the divination seance failed? Huh? How curious, Mr. Wright. Why have you suddenly taken such a keen interest in the divination seance? Yes, explain yourself. The divination seance is for shedding light on an accused crimes. It is the Holy Mother's hammer of wrath that is ever poised to pound you into your grave. You should fear it. Not plead for it. I believe in my client. Plus yesterday, somebody told me something that changed my mind. The divination seance was once thought of as just another piece of evidence. If we were to correctly interpret the visions through careful analysis, then they would lead us to the truth behind what really happened. And the truth will show that my client, Maya Fey, is innocent. The truth is you don't have anything else to fall back on, huh, Nick? Maya, please. You're not helping. How dare you! The voice of Amitama is to be feared, not utilized by vile lawyers such as you! Seances exact a heavy toll upon the royal priestess. It would be best not to burden her any further. Or does the defense feel that it can pose no counter-arguments without the seance? No, of course not! He saw right through me. I'll have to find a way to make the divination seance happen or we're toast. Well, since the divination seance is not possible at this time, I see no other choice. Let us proceed with the trial without the seance, as Prosecutor Satmati suggested. Thank you, Your Majesty. Why, you? I will not forget this barbed head. This will not be the last you see of me. Now then, I will now proceed by providing an outline of the case at hand. Very well. If the lead detective would please come in a stand, we may begin. Sorry, Mr. Wright. Detective Skye, I understand how you would wish to save the accused in the defense. They are your friends, after all. But you must let them go and move on. But... There is only one way to save them now by giving their souls the chance to burn away the taint of their sins in the infernal flames. I... I... I can't do this! Ah, no eating in the sacred hall of justice! Miss Sky. Yes? Don't worry about me and Nick. You just do your job. I'm sure Nick will figure something out. Eventually. Right. Thanks, Miss Fay. How very brave for a criminal with a tainted soul. Very well, Detective Sky. Please proceed. Okay, I can do this. Let me start with an overview of this case. Witness testimony. Overview of a second murder. The latest victim was Perezila. He had been training under the high priest and living in his house for the past two years. The high priest's widow, believe in me, has identified the victim's body. He may have been mistaken for a rebel and killed due to his connection to the high priest. I see. Well, that certainly makes sense. Would the defense care to respond? I didn't spy any inconsistencies in her testimony so far. And I don't have any evidence in my arsenal. What am I going to do now? Hmm. What is it, Maya? I was just wondering about how much the police actually looked into Acolyte Zealot. Because it just might prove to be the key as to why the divination seance failed. 
What are you getting at? Um, well, it's just a hunch. Wait a second. During my investigation, Rafa told me about how the divination seance works. If I could figure out why it failed, maybe she could try it again. Okay, time to press for some more information. Hopefully we find the info needed. Because we need to now more than ever. The latest victim was Pere Zila. He had been training under the High Priest and living at his house for the past two years. The High Priest's widow believe Imi has identified the victim's body. Was Miss Simmi's positive ID the only way you could verify the identity of the victim? Huh? Well, no. We also checked the ID card he carried in the data his family registry. But... But what? His personal information didn't match any of the public records we cross-referenced. Maybe that's why the divination seance failed. I'm not sure what you mean, Mr. Wright. Here's what I'm thinking. Pure per Zilat is a fake name. The victim decided to hide his identity for some reason. In other words, he was using a fake name. The royal priestess used a deceased face and true name to summon their spirit. Why, yes. That is indeed true. If he was using a forged ID and there is no mention of him in our public records, then he was likely an illegal immigrant. They are not uncommon here in Korain. An illegal immigrant. Come to think of it, Rafa mentioned something about immigrants yesterday. But if that's the case, we have no way of knowing who he really is. We'll have to proceed without holding a divination seance this time. I had always thought that Acolyte Zilla was Korainese. Oh, how the High Priest must be lamenting his disciples' deception in the Twilight Realm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think? Should we add this to the testimony? This is an important fact. Please add it to the testimony. Mm, it would seem to be a fact most inconvenient for the defense. But if you insist, Detective Sky, please add what you just said to your testimony. Yes, Your Majesty. He was an illegal immigrant, so we don't know his real name. I figured you'd say that. <sighs> Guess we'll have to submit this, the crime photo. Objection! Sorry, Detective Sky, but the police missed something important in their investigation. Huh? What are you talking about? The victim was undeniably a Kurainese native, and this crime scene photo proves it. It does? It's a little hard to see, but look closely. You'll see clear proof that the victim was Kurainese. Where? I don't see anything that would prove that. This proves the victim was Kurainese. The tattoo of the tattoo right here. Look at this tattoo right here. Why, that's a tattoo of a peach? I would like you all to think about the meaning of this tattoo. Oh, um... The victim really liked peaches? Well, peaches are a favorite delicacy here in Korai. They happen to be a personal favorite of mine. The sweetness of their abundant nectars and the softness of their perfectly ripe flesh. They are a blessing from the Holy Mother herself. Nick, I've suddenly got a craving for peaches. After the trial, Maya. Right now we have bigger fish to fry. Unfortunately, that is not a tattoo of a peach. It is not a peach, you say? Then what is it? Take a closer look. Haven't you seen something like that before? Namely, the tattoo on the high priest's brow? Oh my. What? This mark is only borne by members of the Corinus clergy. Objection. So that is what you believe it to be. But are they not utterly different shapes? Sure, they're shaped differently, but there's a reason for that. The victim had the peach-shaped tattoo inked over an existing tattoo for some reason. However, the dark red portion is exactly the same as the mark all Krynus clergy bear. Hey, you're right! Mm, until about 20 some odd years ago, everyone did get one, didn't they? I myself bear one on my right butt. That is entirely too much information, your majesty. Information on everyone who enters the clergy is maintained at the temple. All we have to do is look upon a monk with a mark in the same spot. I'm on it. I'll let you know if I get any hits. That will not be necessary. If you seek information on the clergy, 
I have it all right here. Oh my, you never cease to amaze. So tell us, is there anyone who fits the bill? There is just one, and his name is Real Nemu. He became a monk 20 years ago. Then that must be the victim's real name. But why would he have tried to cover up his tattoo of another one? Yeah, there must have been some reason. Nick, that's not important right now. The important thing is we know his real name. You're right. Your Majesty, now that we know the victim's real name, the divination seance might finally work. Hmm, a lawyer who willingly seeks a seance. This is entirely unexpected. Huh, <laughs> you're but digging your own grave, Defense. We won't know that until we try. Sure, it's risky, but it's our only hope. Very well. Let the divination seance be held once more. Why would a lawyer work so hard to see the divination seance be held once more? You are a fool, barbed head, and your foolishness shall yield no gratitude from me. For with the truth revealed by my insights, I shall gladly seek your demise. Bring it on, princess, because I will correctly interpret each and every one of your insights. <laughs> you will regret ever thinking you could use my sacred insights as evidence. Oh, holy mother, we hold this divination seance in your name. Let the eyes of everyone here be clear and our ears be unstopped. Oh, dance of devotion. Guide the victim's soul to me, so that we may receive their final memories in the pool of souls. This is it. Oh my, it is just as Mr. Wright surmised. Perlay, Perlay Zelot wasn't the victim's true name. And now at last we have seen the victim's final moments. But all we could see was the ground. You seem terribly disappointed. I take it you did not find any fodder for one of your infamous turnabouts. Yeah. I, on the other hand, have discovered something. Conclusive evidence that establishes the accused's guilt. 
You did? <laughs> A most surprising attack. So tell us, Prosecutor Satmati, what is this conclusive evidence you have found? The plumed Punisher theme song that the deceased heard. Please consider this item here. It was confiscated from the accused during her interrogation. Hey, that's my plume Punisher strap! When you press the Magatama on the plume Punisher's belt, Yep, we are absolutely boned right here. It seems the accused inadvertently pressed the button in the midst of her crime. This strap is an extremely rare item, is it not, Miss Fay? You better not break it! There's only one of those in the whole wide world! Maya, no! It is just as I said. Your flights of fancy have come crashing down on you. She sir seems to be enjoying this. Yeah, I've never seen her look so thrilled before either. It is time to accept the fact that the divination seance is far more than mere evidence. It is the very truth that brings the hammer of justice down upon the accused. That is as conclusive as evidence can get. Now then, if there are no further objections... Objection! Slow down there, your majesty. At least let me make a counter-argument. What's this? Do you take issue with a divination seance? Oh, I have issues with it. I just don't know what they are yet. But that's never stopped me before. The divination seance is not the absolute truth. It only becomes a truth after it's been interpreted correctly. <sighs> you do not know when you are beaten, do you, you foolish lawyer? I am the only one who speaks for the Mitama of the deceased. If you believe there are to be errors in my insights, then let us see you prove it. Commence insight. The victim was offering up his prayers. It was the night of the rite. Though it's dark, the pattern on the plaza's ground was visible. Then someone was there, and the theme of the Plume Punisher filled the air. The accused held the defenseless victim down and plunged her knife into his neck. The blade struck true, and in that instant he departed from this world. That is everything the deceased experienced in his final moments. Her benevolence's insights have painted a detailed picture, both vivid and true. I didn't notice any holes there. As they stand now, those insights are really stacked against us. I'll just have to go over each and every one of the deceased sensations very carefully. Statement 2. Pause. Yep, the smell of food. Got one. Objection! Was it really the night of the right? What do you mean? It could not be otherwise. The accused slew Acolyte Zealot after killing the High Priest during the Purification Rite. The only problem is the deceased spirit does not corroborate that. What's this? Take a good look at what the victim smelled. Do you see how it says, Gingly? Acolyte Zealot shouldn't have smelled any gingy on the Night of the Rite. What do you mean? Let me back up my statement with some evidence for you. This should explain how the victim couldn't have smelled gingerly on the night of the right. Yeah, he's right about that. Believe statement. Take that! The high priest's wife, believe in me, told me about the Feast of Blessings. The feast includes a number of gingerly based dishes, and they're only supposed to be served at a certain time the day before the right. Why, I believe you're right. I had completely forgotten about that. During the feast, the unique smell of Jinjil pervades the entire kingdom. The fact that the victim smelled it means he was murdered between noon and 3 p.m. the day before the purification rite. That's enough! <laughs> I am not so easily fooled. 
Did that autopsy report not make it clear? The estimated time of death was during the right. Oh, right. I taught her about that yesterday. Forgive me, your benevolence, but the estimated time of death is just that, an estimate. Depending on the circumstances, it's possible for it to change. What's this? Like, if a body was kept cold, the slow rate of decay makes the death seem more recent. Why, well, I believe I have heard something of the sort before. Hmm, if it is, if it is as Mr. Wright claims, the estimated time of death in the autopsy report will have to be revised. Indeed. Yeah! Barbed head, you! You blinded me with science! S sorry Wait, what am I apologizing for? <laughs> no matter. The murder may have occurred in the afternoon hours the day before the right. Nevertheless, the murder weapon with the accused prints on it is incontrovertible evidence. I will now amend my insight to account for this new truth. Insight revised. It was the afternoon of the day before the right, though it's dark the pattern on the polished ground was visible. The time of death has been corrected, leaving my insight infallible. Nick, a change in the time of death is bound to cause some sort of an inconsistency. If I had something that showed what it was like on that day, it could really help. We choose the same statement. No, wait. Rewind. Pause. Yep. Then tell me. If that's the case... Objection! What's this? The change in the date and time of the crime has caused a new inconsistency to surface. What's this? Ugh, you're making that irritating face again! Cease that at once! Sorry, but this is the face I was born with. Now let's focus on what is important. What the victim saw in his final moments. Do you have bats in the belfry, barbed head? There is nothing to see. The ground at the plaza was all that entered the victim's eyes. And that's what I find so strange. On the day before the right, it should have been impossible to see that pattern on the ground. Impossible, you say? Do explain. This piece of evidence shows why the plaza's ground was not visible by that day. The May 9th newspaper. Take that! The newspaper has an article that is tiny in size but huge in importance. It says that the ground was covered with thick white ice the day before the right. What? What? The victim did not see so much as an ice cube on the ground. Exactly. And so we must ask, what was the victim looking at in his final moments? If you have something to say, then say it. The last thing the victim saw was not the ground at the Plaza of Devotion. This can only mean that he was killed elsewhere. What? 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 And where did you propose the victim was actually killed? Yes, tell us where, otherwise your argument is worthless. Um, about that... Ugh, I hadn't gotten to that part yet. Any ideas, Maya? Um, let me think. Well, it's somewhere green and shaggy, right? Right, but where could that be? What is it, Barbhead? Giving up already? Not at all. Now, where have I seen something green and shaggy? This shows where the victim was killed. The rebel hideout photo. Take that! The secret hideout the rebels were using. The rebel hideout? There was no such place anywhere on the floor of that chamber. You're absolutely right. There's no place on the floor anyway. Then what did the victim see in his final moments if not the floor of the rebel hideout? This is what the victim saw in his final moments. Point the faint handprints on the green object. Take that! The shaggy green surface the victim saw was one of the moss-covered stone slabs. 
As you can see, there are two distinct handshape impressions in the moss there. I believe the victim was killed while he stood there with his hands pressed against the slab. Objection. That does agree with the seance vision. However, one can definitely declare they are one and the same. I concur. There is no proof that a murder occurred in the rebel hideout. Indeed, what evidence do you have of this? I've already shown you the evidence. What do you mean? Please take a look at this second version of the photo I just showed you. You can see the results of the luminal test I performed in the rebel hideout. This is proof positive that someone had been bleeding in front of the stone slab. Is this true? This information has already been provided to the police. Detective Sky, to whom does this blood belong? We thought it was the High Priest's blood that flowed in from outside, so we haven't tested it yet. Then you must do so at once. Yes, Your Majesty. It appears the police have finished testing the blood. Detective Sky, your report, please. The blood found in the Rebel hideout belongs to Parazila, just like the defense claims. Detective Sky, do you realize what your blunder has done to me? When this trial concludes, I want to see you in my prayer chamber. There I will deliver a joyous sermon on you for eight hours straight. I'm really sorry, but please anything but that. Nick, maybe just maybe, this is the chance we've been waiting for. Yup, it would seem so. I hate to do this to Emma, but go for it. It's full speed ahead. The victim was killed in the rebel hideout the day before the purification rite. Then his body was moved to the Plaza of Devotion by someone we've yet to identify. So when we thought we saw Acolyte Zealot praying during the rite, he was already dead. Ah! And that's not all. If he was killed at the Inner Sanctum, that would explain one more thing. That would be how the time of death was made to look later than it actually was, the proof of which was left behind at a sanctum. This points to how the time of death was made to appear later than it actually was, the inner sanctum photo. Take that! Why, these are photos of the inner sanctum? I'd like you to focus on this one. The proof is right here in this photo. This is how the time of death was made to appear later than it really was. Do you see how the snow has been removed from this one spot only? That's because it was used to keep the victim's body cold. And that's why the time of death wasn't what it seemed. The time was mistaken, and the place too, and just what do you believe that proves? That my client is innocent. What of her fingerprints on the dagger, and the Poon Punisher thing the victim heard? You have failed to address these two key pieces of evidence. I see your point. Wasn't this your big chance, Nick? Ah, I'm really hoping that the difference in location can invalidate either the weapon or the theme song from being used as evidence against you. Actually, that might be possible, at least for one of them. Really? What's this? You say you can contradict our argument for a key piece of evidence? Very well. Let us see you try. Nick, take a good look at the Rebel Hideout photo. Um, uh... Oh. The defense can invalidate this piece of evidence. With what else? The Plumed Punisher theme. The Plumed Punisher theme? And how do you intend to support such a claim? Since the murder happened in the Rebel Hideout, there's something there that played the theme song, other than my client's strap. It wasn't the strap? Is this true? The item that played the Plume Punisher theme song was this clock right here. Take that! This is a Plume Punisher alarm clock. I believe the victim heard its alarm go off. What proof do you have that the alarm went off? Objection! What proof do you have that it was my client Strap that played the theme song? Ah! Do not twist the facts with your lawyerly wiles. Either way, the accused would still be guilty based off of her prints on the murder weapon. And here is what really happened. 
Insight revised. The victim stood with his hands on the stone slab in the hideout. It was the afternoon of the day before the riot. Though there have been some twists and turns, that is the truth of what happened. Urgh! I won't get anywhere until I can eliminate the dagger. Most impressive, your benevolence. I see no inconsistencies anywhere in the prosecution's case. No! There is one! What's this? You still claim that there'd be inconsistency? <laughs> Try as you might, the outcome will always be the same. True statement one. That one. Bingo! Right here. Heavy feeling. Objection! The victim was originally thought to have been stabbed while bent over in prayer, but he was actually standing with his hands against the stone slab. So the question is, where did the sensation of something heavy come from? Mm, yes, I see your point. Since the victim was standing, he couldn't have been held down. <laughs> then tell us, Mr. Ride, what was that heavy sensation felt by the victim? Hmm, what caused the heavy sensation Zealot felt? Any thoughts, Maya? Uh, I agree that sense of heaviness seems important, but... There's also the matter of Zealot's hands on the stone slab. Why were they even there? Could it be related to the cause of the heavy sensation? Well, Mr. Wright, do you have an answer for us? Of course! If I just envisioned the state Zealot was in when he was killed... The cause of the heav heaviness the victim felt was the falling stone slab. The only conceivable cause is... The stone slab falling over, trapping the victim underneath. What? <laughs> oh! The stone slab came falling down and crushing him underneath. Right. That was the cause of the heavy sensation the victim felt. Come on! While your theory is impressive, you have overlooked a key fact. The victim was not crushed to death, rather he was stabbed. Oh yeah! Or do you claim the dagger was plunged in after the slab had fallen on him? Plus, had the killer been behind the victim, they would have both been crushed together. Well, would you care to explain? Sure, I'd love to. That doesn't mean I can. Mm. How could the dagger have been plunged in after the slap fell on the victim? The killer couldn't have plunged the dagger into the victim after the slap fell on him. But what if the murder weapon wasn't what we thought it was? Well, there were other weapons in the rebel hideout. But the entrance to the hideout is right by the stone slab. There isn't enough space between the two to use any of the weapons found within. Yeah, there's not much space by the entrance, is there? So what was the real murder weapon then? I'd better think of something. If the murder weapon wasn't the dagger, then the dagger must have been plunged into the victim after he was already dead. That means he was stabbed at least twice, but the autopsy doesn't mention that. Then he must have been stabbed in the same spot with something shaped like the dagger. Would the defense care to offer an explanation sometime this century? Wait, wasn't there something dagger-like near the scene of the crime? Something that had a shape similar to the Warbot dagger? Present your evidence at this time, Mr. Wright. This shows what really killed the victim. Is it it? The Inner Sanctum Photo. Inner Sanctum Diagram. Yep, the Inner Sanctum Photo. Take that! Is this not the photo from the scene of the crime, High Priest murder? Are you suggesting the murder weapon is hidden herein? This is what really took Beret Zealot's life. 
Wait, I was right? Right here, the statue! Take that! But that is the... The Warbot statue? Exactly. The Warbot statue had dagger-like feathers protruding from it. That is what really took the victim's life. You imbecilic fool! The statue was outside of the hideout. How do you propose it impaled someone who was inside? Haven't you heard? The Warbot statue also functions as the hideout's door. What do you mean? The statue can pull a complete switcheroo. A switch a -roo? To put it simply, it's a revolving door. A revolving door? Why, that makes perfect sense! Therefore, I believe the truth behind the divination seance to be this. As the victim entered the secret hideout, the scone sculpture came toppling toward him. He threw up his hands to stop it, but its weight forced him backwards. Unfortunately, the Warbot statue was right behind him. This... this cannot be! But the accused fingerprints were found on the dagger! She had held it while rehearsing for the rite, which is when her prints got on it. Gah! This is a shocking turn of events, but there is a great deal of circumstantial evidence in the defense's favor. I believe we must accept that the Warbot statue is what killed the victim. Now that we know how Alkalite Zealot really met his demise, there's no basis for claiming my client committed this crime. Nice work, Nick. How can this be happening yet again? The divination seance is the only truth. No, your benevolence. It's not the truth itself, but it is a means for shedding light on the truth. Yeah. Do you understand now? Your kingdom needs lawyers so that they can interpret your insights. But... That means I... I have been misinterpreting the voices of the spirits all this time? Ew, Benevolence, are you unwell? All the color has drained from your face. I will be fine. Continue your proceedings without me. As you wish. I feel kind of bad for her. Now then, I will have the defense to continue. Please explain what you have learned now that we know how the victim actually died. Acolyte Zealot was killed in the hideout before the High Priest's murder. That means the body found at the Plaza of Devotion was moved there by the real killer. But only after the Warbot Dagger was thrust into him, to make it look like the murder weapon. That does seem to be agree with what we now know. But why would the real killer go to such length? I believe stabbing Acolyte Zealot's body with the dagger and moving it to the plaza was to make it look like a serial murder. It was an attempt to make my client look like a serial killer. That's right. The real killer planned all this. This forged serial murder case. They did? That's it, Nick. Keep hammering away. Your reasoning has more holes in it than that cheese you foreigners so enjoy. What? Like those putrid whole riddled clumps of curds that only a rat like you could love. Your reasoning, much like your putrid whole riddled brain, has putrefied. What's his deal with things going putrid? You have yet to overturn my argument that the accused is the killer. A careful analysis of the chain of events up to the killing exposes the truth as follows. Disguised as Lady Kira, the accused found the rebel hideout the day before the rite, but Acolyte Zealot had followed her there after noticing her suspicious behavior. 
caught by surprise, she pushed the stone slab toward him. And we know the rest. I've never been to the rebel hideout in my life. When the high priest arrived at the sanctum the next day, he realized what she had done. That is when the accused murdered him in order to silence him. Mm. I believe Prosecutor Sadmati had posed a compelling scenario. The defense, on the other hand, has yet to disprove the accused's guilt. Objection! Why would my client move Acolyte Zealot's body to where everyone could see it? And why would she stab the dagger with her fingerprints into his dead body? She had no reason to do any of those things. The dagger in his corpse was likely a warning to the rebels. Something along the lines of Lady Kira will slave a defiant dragon. So that is why she moved the body to the plaza for all to see. Now he has the judge convinced too? I thought I finally made some headway. Well, Mr. Wright, about time for one of your groans of distress, is it not? Groan of distress? It kills me to admit this, but I've got nothing to counter his argument. And I still haven't disproven the allegations against Maya. Is it not time to end your feudal struggle? You already judged guilty yesterday. That makes you a dead lawyer walking. Accept the death that now awaits you, and in doing so, finally no peace. A dead lawyer walking indeed. Then again, are not all lawyers who practice in crime? But I must admit, I misspoke earlier. Allow me to amend my statement. I had said the defense's reasoning had a putrid cheese-like smell. But I now realize the stench was from his own putrid body on the verge of death. Now I'm a rotting zombie. Think, who could have killed Zealot the day before the right? Who knew about the rebel hideout and could gain access to the inner sanctum? Hmm, only those involved with the right can enter the sanctum, so... Wait a second. Only a rebel would have known about the secret hideout. And the only person who was involved with the right had access to the sanctum. And was suspected of being a rebel is... Did somebody come to mind? Yes. Except there's one huge problem. A huge problem? What are you two going on about? Wanting your escape from the sacred hall? I would not put it past you considering you have no means to raise further objection. If I don't do something, Prosecutor Sadmati will have this one in the back. I'll just have to bluff my way out of this regardless of that huge issue. Your Majesty. I believe there is another suspect in Perez Zealot's murder. Even the most benevolent Holy Mother would not forgive such a desperate lie. After all, you know very well that such a person does not exist. No, there is one person who knew everything. Does such a figure truly exist? Tell us, who might that be? I believe the prime suspect in Acolyte Zealot's murder is none other than Tarustin Me. Take that! It had to be someone allowed to enter the sanctum. And who knew of the hideout? And that would be the high priest. He could have committed the crime if it occurred the day before the right. You would pin a crime upon the dead, knowing very well they tell no tales? Have you no shame? Dead men tell no tales. That is definitely a problem. If only the High Priest could tell his side of the story. Um... Hmm... What? Do I have something on my face? Wait a second. Could this actually work? Oh no. Don't tell me I have some of my breakfast coffee between my teeth. No. If there's even the slightest possibility, I'll have to go with it. Your Majesty, dead men do tell tales. Therefore, I would like to request the High Priest's testimony. His testimony? And just how do you propose we get for the deceased to testify? There's a way for the dead to testify. It's known as spirit channeling. Summon him here by means of spirit channeling. What did you just say? Spirit channeling? Has this lawyer finally gone insane? This is sacrilege. May the Holy Mother strike him down. Peace. I am frankly astonished you even know of such a thing. But spirit channeling is a secret art that only Her Eminence Queen Garan can perform. 
and her eminence is far too busy with other duties to perform it at our pleasure. I suspected as much. That means her only hope is... Maya. It's okay, Nick. You can tell them. But Maya! I thought you wanted to keep it a secret here in Kurai. Don't worry. It's not like it's against the law or violates some religious precepts, so... I don't think we'll be punished. At least, I hope not. But this is a crucial period for you. It'll decide whether you become master of Kurain. We don't have any other choice now, do we? If I'm found guilty, it'll be a lot worse than not becoming master of Kurain. Alright. Thanks, Maya. Actually, there is someone here who is capable of channeling spirits. But even her benevolence, Princess Rafa, finds the divination seance to be a challenge. Who could possibly have greater spiritual power than she aside from the queen? That... that would be... me. Is this some sort of a joke? A foreigner could not possibly have such power. Even the royal priestess is incapable of such a feat. Peace! Peace, I say! Is this true? Is the accused capable of performing the secret art of spirit channeling? Um, well, yes. Yes, I can. Now, your majesty, we'd like your permission to begin. What is your problem, Rafa? Your benevolence. This is an outrage. An outrage, I say. First you make a mockery of the divination seance, and now spirit channeling? Her benevolence speaks the truth. Spirit channeling is a sacred right. Foreign devils, I'd say they should be put to death immediately. Still your voices. Barbed head, spirit channeling is a most sacred and secret of arts. Are you prepared to face the consequences of what you propose? Yes, I am. Your benevolence, are you saying you approve of their use of spirit channeling? I will judge whether their claim is true. If this is but another of their lies, they shall be executed on the spot. Very well then. Um, your benevolence, what if the accused accidentally calls forth an evil spirit? Do you truly believe this foreigner is capable of channeling spirits? Oh, um, no, but I wanted to be sure as I am responsible for the safety of all present. Well, an inexperienced practitioner could inadvertently call forth a dangerous spirit. But do not fear, for I have a Magatama of parting. With it, I can send spirits back to the Twilight Realm by halting their flow of spiritual power. That is a relief, indeed. These foreigners have thrown down the gauntlet. Let us not shirk from their challenge. We must prove them guilty and deliver their last rites. Do I make myself clear, Prosecutor Sadmati? Perfectly, your benevolence. Very well. The accused may channel the high priest's spirit. But first, we must take a short recess to prepare. We will resume as soon as the preparations are complete. Until then, this court is adjourned. Yep, next part is where we finish it. And if anything, I'll split it like always. So that's it for this part of Spirit of Justice. If you enjoy it, like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the bell. I will see you when it all ends for Case 3. This is Mega Man NG signing off. Peace out. Why not provide it by Capcom.